keys to the kingdom church uh, and it's up to us not to say oh I'm about to preach here in a little bit but we sit around waiting on this when you're going to do this when, what's going on here and the bottom line is you were saved 2,000 years ago you was healed 2,000 years ago every need that's going to come your way was taken care of 2,000 years ago but what he's saying is you put your faith in that work of Calvary you put your faith in that day I laid my life down I've done everything the Father asked of me I devoted my whole life I was obedient to my last breath. You put your faith in that, and I promise you, you will be spiritually taken care of. Y'all with me? Amen. No, we just, we'd like to do that a different way. Mm -mm. You know, I've heard it said, well, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Huh? Y'all ever heard that? Or more than one way to skin a cat. That may be so. We're not skinning cats. Amen. We're talking about drawing your last breath and not going to a devil's hell, but making sure that you enter in that pearl gate, that it's made of one pearl, that you enter into heaven, that you go to that place where Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. That's what I'm worried about. That's what I'm concerned about. That's what I'm, pre it's a prepared place for a prepared people. And the only way that you'll be properly prepared is that you put your faith in Jesus Christ and there's no other way to skin this cat. Mm, boy, that brings me back to that bumper sticker I saw with all those religious symbols. This symbol, that symbol. Uh, can we all just get along? Uh, can we all? No, we can't all get along. I'm not here to tell you that there's going to be unity and all this nonsense going on. I've said it over and over again. I'm here to tell you Jesus said, I come to bring division. Uh, he said, there's going to be a day, there's going to be a line drawn. And he said, all the goats is going over here and all the sheep are going over here. Uh, and it's not going to be about what I think or, or what I say. He's going to call the shots, church. And we're going to have to do things his way. Y'all with me? That's what God's looking for the church to do. Stand up and shine in these last days. It needs to be crystal clear. We should not have a world that's thoroughly confused about how to make heaven their home. It needs to be put out there so clear that you either accept it or reject it. Then it's on you. He said if the watchman Huh? If the watchman don't sound the alarm, huh? it's your watch. You know, you're the watchman. You're on the wall. Hey, uh, when I was in boot camp, it was called a uh, fire guard. Uh, and I, I really didn't like it because they would say, well, you got, you got from three to four o'clock tonight. And you had to get up for an hour and you just sit there in case something were to catch on fire, you're going to let everybody know we get out of the building. And when your hour was up, you had somebody's name there and you went in there to their bed and you're like, hey, you're on. It's you. I'm going to bed. And, and that's how you make sure that nobody burned up in a fire in the barracks. So, but I got something a lot more important than that. It's talking about people splitting hell wide open because they never heard the good news of Jesus Christ. And if we don't sound the alarm, church, it says the blood will be on us. Amen. Amen. Man, we don't like that kind of preaching. I said we don't like that kind of preaching. But that's the truth. That's God's word. And then it goes on to say, but if we sound the alarm, the blood won't be on you, but it'll be on them. People should not be confused about how to be saved. You mean to tell me you can snatch up a computer? I see people do it all the time. Young people, man, they can work that thing over. I'm just like, wow, you know, uh, I'm not real computer savvy. But you can ask these same people, uh, do you know how to be born again? And they'll begin to stutter. They'll begin to get this look in their eye like, what are you talking about? Uh, we missed it somewhere. I may have been honored as the devil growing up, but I knew how to be saved at a very, very young age. And we got people graduating college with a degree to hang on the wall. Well, I'm not even getting, this ain't what I had this morning, but I'm telling the truth though. It's a shame that somebody 
can go into a college, a university, and spend four years and spend all their time studying and all this great wisdom, and they and they walk and get their uh, degree, and they hang on the wall, and they now go get this certain job, and don't have the first foggiest idea about when he told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Uh, I'm here to tell you something, church. There's more priority needs to be in our life than what's going on. And it needs to be that we know how to be born again. It needs to be that we're covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. And it needs to be that we got enough of his heart beating in us uh, that we got concerned about people dying and going to a devil's hell. Amen. I heard it said the other day, a funeral director, he said, you know, every funeral I've ever had preached to, they preached them right on in the head. Can y'all agree? Huh? Have you ever went to a funeral? Come on now. And they did not preach them in the head. Y'all think they all went? Are oh, you judging now? Do you think they all win? Do 100% of people that pass make heaven their home? No, we know better than that. I said, we know better than that. Y'all know the parable of the sower? You broke that up into four groups. Jesus did. Some fell on stony ground. Y'all think the stony ground folks made it? They didn't produce fruit. Some fell on there and it sprung up. Persecution hit. Whew, forget this. We can't take a little persecution. I've spent my whole life getting in front of folks and I'm not comfortable. And I'm not comfortable getting in front of crowds. Hey, I'll be honest with you. I hate it. I don't like getting in front of folks. But he called me to preach. And I said, I will do it. I will do it for you, Jesus. That's why I'm up here this morning. And we got folks that just love being in front of a crowd that won't darken the door of a church. Huh? And we think that, well, uh, we can't deal with a little persecution, you know? There was a time when it wasn't cool to be Pentecostal. There was a time when you were ridiculed, holy roller, this, that, and the other. And now, you know, but still yet, the church is not thriving in America as it should. I will tell you right now, there's more folks sitting at the house this morning nationwide than there are in churches. There may be more folks out playing a little golf this morning than there is in churches. Or this, that, and the other. Y'all with me this morning? I'm telling you, something is going on in this country, and it's going to be to the advantage of the enemy of our soul if we don't come to ourselves. Thank God for the cross. Can you say thank God for the cross? Mm -hmm. Look at here. There's a judgment coming. There's a judgment coming. God is going to judge. Why? Because it says the wages of sin is death. Well, I ain't did no sin. Boy, is that not the truth today? I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I know a situation. <laughs> it's a little comical. Individual left a, a pistol in this apartment of a relative. He said, I put that up there, don't touch it. Next thing you know, he gets it out and had a laser on it. He's, he's going around the house. Wasn't nobody there. He's checking around, you know. Boom! It went off. He was shot through the wall. Hit another apartment, went through their wall, and hit above the bed of a, a child. It was loud. And, and these apartments all, he was on the second floor, they all had doors. Everybody comes out of their door like, you know what he did? Leon, he come out with him. What's going on? He tried to blend in. I ain't done nothing. See, that's how it is in the world. 
the wages of sin is dead. Well, I hadn't done anything wrong. I hadn't, uh, what you talking about? We better come to a place where we can look ourselves in the mirror and say, I am guilty. I am not perfect. I need God's mercy. I need God's grace. Hey, I messed up. It should be okay to mess up. You know what? No, we can't. We can't. Because, I mean, look at the media. Uh, you know, we are all human beings who have, you know, we, we're tempted. We have weaknesses. We have frailty. We cannot do this on our own, but we're expected to. And, oh, God forbid that somebody in the church slip and fall in a mud hole because they were crucified. And, and it's just really the opposite of that. This word is full of provision that you can lean upon the grace of God that will carry you through. We live in a day of grace, but we got to admit something, church. We're wrong. We're wrong. Y'all with me? Amen. You know, it's no wonder. I mean, I've, I've heard it my whole life, but the world will say well, if brother so-and-so is going to make it, I'm going to make it too. Y'all ever heard that one? Yeah. Man, I've heard that my whole life. We shouldn't give them a reason to say that. I said we shouldn't give them a reason to say that. You're right. If you're going to be accused, it needs to be falsely. And if you are being accused, you need to get that under the blood. And, and set your sails in a different direction. And begin to get a hold of Jesus Christ and the work of the cross so that you can be free. Amen. I said there's judgment coming. And all, there's only one way to escape. And it's not going to be because you didn't do nothing. That No. All. It says all. Y'all know what A double A double L is? That's all. All have sinned and fell short. Of the glory of God. So what can I say about myself? I think I'm doing all right. That's not what it says. All have sinned. That's all I can say about myself. I have blew it. Get over it. Now we can go to work. Now we can get about the Father's business. Thank you for the cross. Can I share a verse with you? He... It, that work saves us from that judgment. You know, they say, hey, I've got a judgment against you. Uh, you owe, boy, this would be terrifying, but you owe the IRS $400,000. Are you a fan of the IRS? Anybody? <laughs> At one time they talked about we're going to do away with the IRS and everybody just pays 10% of their income. I thought, man, sign me up. This is sounding good. And you know, I've heard it like that. If it, if it works for the church, it'll work for the government. And they said, if everybody just pay 10% of what they make to the government, we can have free health care. I don't know. I'm just saying I've heard this. But there's people that aren't going to do that. Just like the other part. I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to get too sidetracked, but the same way People won't give a tenth of their income to God. They're not, they wouldn't give it to the government. So we have to have the IRS. And, 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 and it's their job to go out, you know. The, the church isn't like that. It's more lenient, I guess you might say. But the IRS can send you a letter that will just mess up your day. There's a judgment against you. There's a judgment against us spiritually because what we have done of our own free choice, our own free will, there's a judgment coming. And because of the cross of Calvary, we get out of that. Let me, let me share it with you. John 5, verse 24. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word. You, you, you see the significance of hearing the word? The only way this is going to happen is if you hear the word. The reason people graduate college and don't know how to be saved is because they have not heard the word. I say shame on mama and daddy 
for you know that you focused on all this and you did this and you got them through whatever the case may be but you dropped the ball on hearing the words of Jesus Christ and he had this to say the wise man built his house on what these words of mine and there's many many people that have built their house on sinking sand huh he said if you hear my word and you believe on him that sent me you have to hear you have to believe all I heard that's not enough you have to hear but you have to believe it says there he has everlasting life aren't you thankful that you have everlasting life aren't you thankful that you heard the word and you believe the word that's all that's necessary and shall not come into condemnation but he's passed from death unto life you're not going to come under condemnation. You're not going to come under this judgment. What's going to happen? You're going to pass from death to life. In other words, here's where you were. Here's what you had coming. And it was nothing but death. But as a result, you heard. And as a result, you believed. And you made a choice. But now, you have come out of death row. And you have went into life row. And you now have the best days of your life set before you. Because they're now with Christ. Are you with me? Amen. How's all that possible? Because man, I'm guilty. It's possible because of what he done for you. And it's up to us, church, to tap in. Amen. It's sitting automatic. You got a part. You have to hear. You have to believe. And now as a result, you pass from death unto life. And you're not going to be under condemnation. You're not going to be under judgment because of what Jesus done. His people are, we're, we're justified people. What do you mean? I've said it before, but the, the, the best way to remember that word is justified. Just as if I had never done it. Wow, that's kind of hard to get a hold of. But it's the truth. As a result of the cross of Calvary, it's just as if you never done it. You get to this place where, man, I'm guilty. Hey, yeah, I need you. Uh, yeah, I, it's hopeless. It, you know, it's not looking good. I got death coming at me. I got condemnation. I got judgment coming at me. But his people are a justified people because of the cross, because of his work. Let me share another verse. We've heard these, but all we got to have a refresher course. Because I'm here to tell you, it don't take long. I'm talking about good believers. Good, solid, sold out believers. When we neglect the word, we'll start talking crazy. When we neglect church attendance, we'll start acting crazy. All these things, you know, I'm not saying they save you, but I'm telling you right now, they're going to play a big part in your anchor holding and keeping your faith where it should be. And proper faith is going to produce proper work, sir. And faith without works is dead. This is all, there's a balance here. But you show me somebody without, you know, proper faith, they're not going to have proper works. And you can confess and say this all day long, but the bottom line is this. If we're going to be a justified people, we're going to have to have our faith anchored in Jesus Christ. Romans 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation. Huh? No, that'd be zero. How much, how much judgment's coming your way? Uh, zero. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. What, what's, what's the, the main ingredient there? We must be in Christ. We must have a saving knowledge, a covenant relationship with Jesus Christ. We must put our trust in the work of Calvary in order for this to be real in our lives. But when we do, it says there's no condemnation. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit? Huh? Yeah. You know, there's, a, a, there's kind of a twofold thing there. Which naturally, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You should change. Huh? Yeah. Our habits... Whatever the case may be, there should be a change take place in our lives as we begin to walk with Jesus. Some are like this, and some are little by little. But whatever the case may be, God should be working in our life, 
And there should be a distinct change. Amen. And then another thing is, a way to look at this, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. When you're trying to get God's approval, are you doing it through the flesh? Are you doing it through the spirit? Seriously, that's something to think about. Because religion will be through the flesh. It'll tell you crazy things like, that. it might not be this extreme, but uh, go over here in the corner and, and, and do a handstand and flip up on your head and stay there for 30 minutes and then roll back over and, uh, you know, do this. And then as you're going through the day, make sure you wash your hands four times a day and, you know, do this and this and this. And, hey, at the end of the day, you'll be looking good. That's flesh. God is a spirit. And we need to pursue him in spirit. Those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. And naturally, if your flesh is in control, if your flesh is what's dominant, your spirit will be weaker. Amen. But let's look at what's said there. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So what am I pursuing? What dominates my time? What, you know, what is the main thing of my life? Is it making myself happy? Or is it pursuing the heart of God? Whatever the case may be, it will be accomplished through the work of the cross. Amen. We need God's Spirit in us to equip us, to empower us like an engine is to a vehicle. You can have a beautiful vehicle with all the bells and whistles but if you open the hood and it's just an empty void, it's really not going to benefit much. We need the Spirit of God, church, being real and living inside of us. And it all comes about by putting our faith in Christ. Y'all with me? You ever heard of penalties? Let's get back to the IRS. You know, I'm sure that people send in their, uh, when you figure something, you know, your taxes, and they're like, <laughs> I, bet they, I bet they chuckle. They could have got a lot more money this year. Don't think this don't go on. You got the wrong tax person. And there's, there's things about the, the, the tax codes and this, that, and the other, and I'm sure they look and they're like, oh, they're paying in a lot more than they should, but they'll take your money, and they'll keep right on trucking. Yeah, you think they're going to call you up and say, uh, you know, Mr. Jones, you, you, you figured this wrong and you could have did this and, and there, there's this little loophole here and uh, technically, you could have had about $3,000 more, so we're going to cut you another check. No, they're not going to do that. They're going to keep your money and life's going to go on. But you mess up one time and send something in and let's just say they overpay you. Three or four years down the road, uh, Mr. Jones, we see here that back in that that, that wasn't correct. So now you owe us $3,000 from a year or two ago, plus penalties and interest. Goes on all the time. I, it's unfair, but it's true. Amen. What I want you to see is penalties. These things, they mean that something is against you. Something's going to take from you. Something's going to, a penalty is not a pleasant experience. And there are penalties to being on the wrong side of God. Amen. Amen. When you find yourself on the wrong side of a God on judgment day, when's that going to be? Well, first of all, when you take your last breath, it might as well be judgment day because life as you know it is over. And there have many that have went on by the way of the grave, and I promise you, when they left this realm and they entered into eternity, they found out I was on the wrong side of God. And now as a result, there are penalties. This is real. Amen. Folks don't want to hear about it, but it's the truth. And we need to look at it in that light. I'll be honest with you. There's times... I would like to drive a lot faster than I'm driving. But you know the sign. Man, this, this is 45 through here. Are you ever going through Carroll? My goodness. I'd hate to go through the town, to be honest with you. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's so slow when you're just, and you got people, but you know one thing, you got out of state plates, just go ahead on speed, they're gonna get you. Uh, it's called speed trap. But because of seeing that and knowing the penalties, it kind of gets me back in line. I'll lock that cruise on 30. Here we go, we're gonna endure. Why? Because we don't wanna suffer penalties. And there needs to be times in our spiritual life that we recognize something. There are consequences to sin. There are penalties that come along with not righteous living, but unrighteous living. And we should have something on the inside of us that would keep us on track because of penalties. Because of the cross, you can escape all penalties. Would you not feel good? Say you had an individual that owed $400,000 to the IRS. And then you got a letter. Mr. Jones, it's all been waived. The interest, the penalties, everything. Your balance is zero. You know them ones that you can't get to clap in church or whoo, I bet they wouldn't end. Huh, give them a $400,000 release. Now, they'll come alive. Well, I'm just this. You wouldn't be shouting in. They'd be up doing the happy dance. $400,000 you no longer owe. Huh? I mean, you know, you'd you like to go out and run around the house shouting. Come on. You'd find you a new burst of energy because that would do something on the inside of you. Uh, going from owing $400,000 to not owing a dime. That's what takes place when you enter into a covenant relationship with Jesus Christ. All that sin that was coming at you that was going to bring you death and eternity in a place of flame and torment where the worm died not, I'm telling you, it's a hideous place you don't want to be. And he says, it's been wiped clean. You're as pure as the driven snow. That's what Calvary does. Can I share something I've probably shared numerous times from this pulpit? It's Galatians 3 and 13. But it says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Curse. Penalty. See what I'm talking about? I've been released. I am no longer indebted to the penalties of the law. Wow. Because my faith is in Jesus. It says, being made a curse for us. How'd you get out of that? He done it for you. You remember way back, they had a custom. We released one, you know, uh, and they, they thought they might say, release Jesus. They said, release Barabbas. Y'all remember that? He, he, was, he was not a very good person. Jesus was a better person than Barabbas. But they, they released him. And they, they kept Jesus, and he goes on to be crucified. But literally, he was the first to experience that Jesus died in his place. He was released, having death upon him. He didn't have to taste of that death then. You're free to go, Barabbas. <laughs> wow, the system has worked for you today. And they kept Jesus, and he was crucified. And what I'm talking about is this. He redeemed us because he was made a curse for us. He, he took our penalty upon him. He took our curse upon him. And he died in our place. Amen. You can't change that. I, I, I don't believe all that. It doesn't matter. That's exactly what has taken place. It says for his river. Curse was everyone that hangs on a tree. Jesus hung up on a tree. You know they thought they were. They thought they were silencing they thought they were doing away with all this political and religious controversy that Jesus, they would blame on. Uh, we're going to just get rid of him. We're going to kill him. You know how it all started? When he healed a man's withered hand on a Sabbath day. Oh my gosh, we can't, what, what are you doing? Could care less about the man's withered hand. Could care less about his quality of life. God the Father, he, he, he cares about your withered hand. He cares about your quality of life. And he come to make your life better. He said, I come to give life 
and give it more abundantly. But when he began to produce this life-giving power, it just really stirred up the political and the religious people that day, and they thought, we got to kill him. And I know, I know our, our president now is not Jesus. I know there's times I'm just like, wow, you know, but I'll say this, from the day he was elected, they've been plotting how to get him out and he never had stepped one foot in office. It's called a made up evil mind. And that's all it amounts to. But we have been totally set free, totally delivered from the penalties. Are y'all with me? Last point I'm going to touch on. We're a free people. You see, with, with being delivered from all penalties, I'm no longer indebted. Ooh, hallelujah. Happy day. My slate's clean. Isn't that great? Here comes the enemy. Tries to remind you. Tries to bring up your past. Don't let that, don't entertain that. Don't think about that. That's a lie from hell. That's under the blood, devil. I don't know that one. No. I don't know that. I'm free. You better get comfortable with that one. Or he's going to talk you out of your goods. But we're a free people. In other words, we are no longer indebted to the law. We are no longer obligated to these penalties. Because we accept what Jesus done at Calvary. Let me share one verse. This will be my last one. John 8, verse 36. It says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. It says, If the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. You need to learn how to ride that one. You need to learn how to put the key in that ignition and drive that thing all day long. Amen. Amen. We monitor ourselves. We think about what we think about. We, 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 we look at ourselves in light of God's word. And you're like, oh, I messed up. I, I shouldn't have did that. Well, get that under the blood. L learn to take advantage of God's grace and God's mercy. And then along with that, and help me to not do this again. That's walking with God. He can work with that. He can move you ahead. He can advance you. But you got to realize something this morning. I am free because of Jesus. He made me free and I'm going to be free indeed. That belongs to you. That's yours. What do I expect? Well, what do you expect? I expect when I put a key in a vehicle, and turn it. Boom. Huh? I put it in D and I take off. Is that, is that not what you expect? Well, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to get this car today. I'm going to buy this car. I'm going to have to sign this paper. And I'm going to have payments for 72 months. $475 for the next 72 months. But you know what I'm looking forward to more than anything? When I put that key in there. It's just going to click. I'm never going to drive that thing. Well, you're crazy. Expectation. The church needs to have more expectation. I'm not talking about your vehicles, but I'm talking about in God's Word. And when you walk in obedience to God, that His Word is going to take place in your life. I will be free. Not because I deserve it. Not because I've earned it. But because Jesus gave his life's blood on Calvary. And I can expect it. Are y'all with me this morning? Hallelujah. If you would please stand. And we will go to the Lord in prayer. I want to thank you for being here this morning. And my prayer is that you leave here more confident. In Christ and less confident in your track record. My track record really has no bearing here. It's all in his track record. Amen. Let's pray.
Dear precious Heavenly Father, we come again thanking you for this time that we have had here together in your name. I thank you for your people that have been faithful and come into your sanctuary. And we've listened and we've just put life on hold to sit and spend time with you to hear your word. And I pray, Lord, that we hide this word in our hearts, that we could be better, that we could be more like you. Lord, I pray that we would, more than ever before, anchor our faith securely in Calvary's cross, Jesus' work on Calvary's cross, and that our trust would be there, and that we would just learn to live in you, to walk with you, to allow you to lead God and direct our lives. And Lord, that we would not be hindered by the outside voices of this world, that we would be more determined than ever before to continue to fight the good fight of faith. I rebuke the work of the enemy. I rebuke the plans of the devil. And I just loose the anointing of God upon these under the sound of my voice that you would give them life and give it more abundantly. I pray that you would bless in such a way in this week to come that everyone here would say, I know God done that. I know God moved on my behalf. Thank you, Jesus, ahead of time for what you're going to do. And we'll give you all praise and glory. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Smile, shake hands, be friendly.